and we're just letting the hips and shoulders rotate together to start just so they feel what happens when they let that back hip fully rotate all the way around. What's up guys, this is Ben Brewster with Tread Athletics and this is part two of a three-part series on J-bands. So in this part, we're gonna talk about low load patterning. There's two specific ways that I've begun to use J-bands in terms of uh, patterning drills for certain guys, depending on if they have a lead leg blocking issue or if they have a pushing arm action issue. So first we're gonna talk about the lead leg blocking issue. And fundamentally, this stems from guys misinterpreting uh, the purpose of the front leg in the delivery in terms of they don't understand that when you brace, it's not a crashing action and the front leg contracting with the quad to brace and extend. They fundamentally don't understand that feeling of what extends the front leg is actually the hips pulling the front leg into extension by completing hip rotation. So knowing that this is a low load patterning drill to focus on completing hip rotation and focusing on, uh, as a result of hip rotation, improving the lead leg block, improving that uh, lead leg extension effect. So there's four different uh, variations or uh, exercises in this progression. The first one is we're going to back up, hips closed and shoulders closed. And the idea is the athlete needs to figure out how to get from here to there. A lot of them are gonna have a tendency to want to shoot forward and brace like this because this is their default. Don't let them do that. Cue them to complete that hip rotation and sit their weight back and allow that front leg to brace and extend. So this is the first of four progressions. We're starting with the shoulders closed, hips closed, band right around waist height, and we're just letting the hips and shoulders rotate together to start just so they feel what happens when they let that back hip fully rotate all the way around. And again, we're driving the movement with that front arm, a little bit of band resistance, just to help them feel that initiation. So this is the first drill, just rotating until the hips are square. You can cheat the front foot open just a little bit so you don't get stuck right there. So cheat the front foot open. Otherwise, hips closed, shoulders rotate together. And that's the first drill. So encouraging them to keep the weight back, finish through with the back hip, and use that glove arm to initiate the movement. Once they get the hang of this, and they understand that relationship, then the next version from there is starting with the hips open and shoulders closed. So from here, you're gonna start hips open, back hip up and forward, uh, rib cage and throwing scap down and back. And from this position, it's continuing with that feeling of the movement. Back hip stays open, dissociating, and then finishing through over the front leg. So get them very comfortable in this pattern. Again, it's not just a rotational pattern, it's rotational, but it's also coupled with lateral flexion. So getting a little bit of shoulder tilt and really projecting that back hip up and over and just finish the rotation with the upper half. Okay, that's progression number two. Progression number three is kind of combining those. So we're gonna cheat the front foot open, hips closed, shoulders closed, and we're going to allow the hips to go first, get us into drill number two, and then finish. Hips open, finish. Hips open, create that lateral tilt, pelvis up and forward, finish. Once they get comfortable there, you can make it a little bit more dynamic, so you do a step into. Okay, you're gonna need to back up to get a good amount of resistance on the band. And instead of just stepping into the movement and trying to slam the brakes on, you're actually gonna to want to carefully step into the movement like you're stepping down a steep slope. So step into the movement as your foot plants. You wanna counter rotate your shoulders, keep the hips open, and then finish the movement. Step, plant, finish. 
step, plant, as you dissociate, finish. Step, dissociate, finish. So again, four different ways that you can start to groove that pattern, make it a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more challenging as you go. And this progression feeds really well into a medicine ball drill that I'll link in the bottom of this video um, that you can have your athletes progress to even more dynamically once they've gotten these fundamental patterns.